Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a, that um, cardigan, cardigan, or whatever you want to call it, that you see in the photo there. I don't have a lot of room here uh, to show you, but it is very pretty. And first off, you can leave the fur off. You do not have to put the fur on. When the time comes, I do give you other options of things that you could do besides fur. Okay, I know everybody doesn't like fur. But as you see, it does have fur all the way around it. Now, this is made with the houndstooth pattern. Um, and you can do it in any color that, that you choose. So, this is, a oversi this is oversized. Now, a lot of the information that you're going to need for this tutorial is going to be found in the description boxes. I have it sizes small all the way up to 5X. Um, it'll tell you everything. Stitch counts for for everything and um you know everything that that you could possibly want to know about that now this is made to have about a six to eight inch positive ease which means that it's oversized by about six to eight inches so um and it's not hard at all you guys can do this let me flip the back it's just kind of plain there i like it a lot it's very, very pretty. Um, this one's going to be a keeper for me. Now, initially, it was not going to be oversized, but yeah, it's oversized now. So, I'll go over with you in this video how to do the hound's tooth stitch. All right. After that, it's going to be uh, you picking your size. Um, with the measurements that I have down there and referring to the chart below um, for your piece and then once you get it all made you come of course I'll show you how to it's all sewn together so let me give you a little idea here before we talk about the yarn what we're dealing with here so like I said, everything is going to be below in the description box. So this is this this particular cardigan has a back panel. And then it has two side panels. They're smaller actually, like that. And then it has two sleeves. I just want to give you a little idea of what you're dealing with here. And then you I have the option for pockets as well. I left those off mine. So here's some pockets down here. So what happens is you make the back panel and in the size, you know, you follow your chain count and everything for your size. And then you make the two side panels. Um, and then we make the sleeves. Okay. So, and then the side panels are sewn on here which I'll show you how to do that in the, in, the, in the description. Now the sleeves are actually flat open, so they're going to appear to be a bit, bit wider, but they're sewn kind of like this on here, like that. And part of the, part of the back panel, you know, in the middle there. You, I explained it in the video. And then they're folded over, folded, and seamed up the side. So... This sleeve here is actually has a seam on the underneath side here, um, right here. Pretty particular about seam, so hopefully it's not that noticeable. But yes, there is a seam running right through here. So the piece is made big, and then once it's sewn onto your project, like I said, I'll show you how to do that. And then we fold it over, and I'll show you how to seam it up down long ways. So in order for the sleeve to have the the houndstooth pattern fall following the correct you know going it all going the correct way the sleeve had to be made big like part of a tear sewn on here and the other part is sewn on the back one big piece and then later like i said we seam it up uh, the long side it had to be made that way that's okay though i show you how to do it it's not hard so, um, and then later, if you want to add pockets, I show you how to do the pockets and you can just sew them on your, uh, side panels is what you'd sew them on. That's the back. All right. So that gives you a little idea of what, uh, what it looks like. 
and then the fur trim it's extremely easy if you like i said if you don't want to do that you don't have to i'll give you another option for that okay so also you'll find how much yard yardage you'll need for each size um but for this particular um one uh that you see there uh, lion brand basic stitch was used it's an anti-pilling um 100 four weight 100 acrylic four weight yarn and of course i used it in black it was used in black and white now you don't have to use this yarn um any four weight will work but i do have the uh, a gauge swatch down there in case you gauge measurements there in case you want to do something different remember this will look great in any color that you choose the hound's tooth is typically done in two colors now if you make it in so if you make it solid it can be done but it's would not be called a hound's tooth then that is a different stitch um, when it's made in a solid color so but you could do it any way you want all right and like i said information below on how much yardage you need uh for your size um and then the fur in case you want to put the fur on you don't have to but in case you want to it's made with Premier a Very Big Plush. All right. As you can see, it is very big. Now, that is just one row of fur on that that you see. One row of double crochet because this is a pretty thick, heavier fur. But this is, this is what I used. Seven weight fur. And I think it's a, yeah, polyester. But remember, you can leave that off if you want. There's options for... You know, I tell you other things that you can do. Hook size is the same for every size. So every size we will be using a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And then for the fur, we'll be using a size N. Some ends are nine millimeters and some are 10. Either or will work for that. All right, now remember, I'm just going to show you the basic hound's tooth pattern. It will be up to you to find your size based on the measurements that I calculated below um, to determine your starting chain for each piece, all right? Because it is pieces that we put together to create that beautiful, beautiful cardigan. All right, so remember, I'm just showing you on a smaller scale, but it is, you do want to start... Um, well, you can start with any color you want. Um, but the first and second row, you want to make sure that you do it in the same color. Um, like for me, I started black on all of mine. That gives it a little bit thicker row at the bottom. That way you can distinguish from the bottom versus the top. All right. So depending on whatever color you choose, we're going to start. And... We're going to start with a base row of single crochet. So we're going to do a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then we're going to do one single crochet in every stitch across until we get to the end of the row. And this will be row one. Remember, it just depends on what size you're making and what panel you're making on um, your chain count which is all given in the description box all right so row two is going to start the repeat row uh what we're going to do but you want do not change colors at this point make sure row one whatever colors that you use row one and row two of every panel that you do is done in the same colors so we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to put a single crochet in the first stitch. And then we're gonna double crochet into the second stitch. And that's what we're gonna repeat all the way across. We are going to single crochet into the next stitch and a double crochet into the next. And we single crochet into the next and double crochet into the next and we just repeat this single crochet double crochet repeat until we get to the end of the row 
single crochet into the next and double crochet into the next single into the next and double into the next and I'm going to continue that single crochet double crochet until I get to the end of the row all right so now we're going to do a collar change so I'm going to bring in my white because that's what I use so I'm made it to the end here and your last stitch should always be it should be um a double crochet here at the end of row two so we're going to go ahead and yarn over and go into that last stitch and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two loops and then i'm going to switch colors i'm going to go ahead and pull my other color through the final two loops on my hook now what i'm going to do is flip this and do a little bit of a knot here so it don't slip away to repeat row two so we're just going to chain one and turn it is just a one row repeat but we just uh, switch colors now i'm going to be carrying this black this yarn, this white tail uh we're not going to do anything with it anymore but i'm going to carry this black yarn with me across now remember you do not have to carry your yarns with you as you go if you feel like it's going to take up a lot more yarn traditionally that is not traditionally the hounds tooth you carry your yarn with you back and forth but it doesn't mean that you have to. You can definitely clip it if you want. It's just a lot more tails. But now we're just gonna repeat row two. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a single crochet into the first stitch and remember to go under that black tail because we're carrying it with us like that. And then a double crochet into the next. So it's just a repeat. And remember, bring this, bring this black with me. So I'm just cro it's kind of like you're hiding a tail, you know, you just crochet it under single crochet into the next stitch and a double crochet into the next. Single crochet into the next and a double into the next. So if you look closely, every row you're actually single crocheting in the double crochet from the previous row and you're double crocheting into the single crochet from the previous row and it's like that on every row so i'm going to repeat the uh, single crochet a double crochet repeat until i get to the last stitch you see me carrying my black yarn along with me i do that so we don't have tails at the end of every row here I'm coming to the end here so you should always end in a double you know because we're just repeating row two so I'm going to switch colors again here at the last stitch so I'm going to yarn over go in draw up a loop yarn over and go through the first two i'm going to drop that color and bring in my uh my black here that i carried the whole way across and pull it through those two loops and now in row three we're just going to keep repeating those two rows back and forth so with this color i'm going to chain one and turn and i'm going to carry a, a good tip to though to do is at the end of every row is give it a little bit of tug so the yarn that you carried doesn't get too tight like that otherwise sometimes it can get tightened up in there and sometimes it can loosen up in there just kind of give it a little bit of a, a tug so your project doesn't start shrinking okay again i'm just going to repeat that row but i'm going to carry my white across this time so when i get to the other end it will be there so again we start off we chained one we turned start off the single crochet into the first stitch make sure you grab that white yarn and carry it along with you and a double crochet into the next single crochet and a double crochet so this is very very easy do not be intimidated by this pattern at all it's not hard as you can see it's just double crochet and single crochet 
and sewing it together is not hard. I just use a yarn needle and a piece of, and a piece of yarn to sew it together. You can do this. Trust me. If there's any article of clothing that you can do that you think looks intimidating, this might look intimidating. Trust me, it is not. You got it. So single and double, sing, single, double, single, double, all the way across. Make sure you're carrying your color with you if, if you choose to carry. Remember, if you don't, you will have tons of tails at the end of every row to sew in. But that is completely up to you. And you should always end in a double and you should always begin with a single. So here I am in my last stitch. I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to drop that black. Bring in my white and pull it through. Oops. Chain one and turn and start again. But I'm going to give it a kind of a tug because we don't want our piece shrinking carrying that yarn along and there it is see that you can already see the hound suit pattern taking place so that's all it is you're just repeating row two and you're switching colors every row carrying that yarn with you and here's one of my pockets like i said you can i tell you about the pockets later i decided not to put pockets on mine but this is what it starts to look like okay now remember you refer to the description box for your size get all your panels made and I'll meet back up with you, all right? All right, so now uh, we most bake, when we do the side panels, they are, we wanna do them the same size as the back panel, as I specified, except for only on the side panels, we're actually gonna do one extra row. Um, and so the back panel ends in black. And if you do the two side panels exactly the same size, they will end in black as well. Well, for the colors that I'm using. Um, but I'm going to do one more row on each of the side panels than I did on the back. So I'm just going to make, so that way, uh, when I sew them together, it won't be, uh, two blacks together. It'll be a white. So I'm just going to go ahead and do, you know, like we've been doing and switch colors here. And I'm going to do one row <clears throat> of white on the just on my side panels just on the two side panels it'd be one extra row of white now i will go over that in the um description box you know depending on what size you're doing so i'm going to go ahead and do this remember it's the same size as your back panel except for one um extra row so when you sew it you know there's not two of the same color together you, get, you know what i mean So I'm going to go ahead and finish this row here and I'll do the same on my other row that way because here's my black pa back panel that way when we sew it up see if I would have left it you would have kind of a big wad of black up there now when you sew it together <clears throat> it won't be quite so noticeable so all right let me finish this up all right so once you get all your pieces made it's time to assemble now, when you notice the hound's tooth, now I'm going to be, you can do the hound's tooth, like I said, in any color that you choose. But when you notice, there's going to be one side that's more prominent than the other. So if you look at this, you can see that I would call this white side prominent because the white shows up more than the black. Now, if I was to flip it in half, you'll know what I'm talking about. See that? That is what I would call black side prominent because the black shows is more visible than the white. And that's going to happen regardless of whatever two colors you use. One side is going to be more prominent than the other. Now, normally I would choose black side prominent for a hound's tooth, uh, but this time I think I do prefer white side prominent. Now, why is this important? I'll tell you why it's important. Because we said we're going to sew it together. We're going to sew it together inside out. So, <clears throat> what you want to do is take uh, your back piece, which I have here, and this is the piece that I want to be facing outward to show you know i want this to be the main piece you know that everybody sees so start with the uh where you started down here this 
uh, this is where we started put that at the bottom all right and this is where we ended up here put that at the top so facing your good side that you want to use facing up and then you're going to take your side panels and you want to face them downward in the opposite direction all right so now those are facing uh, black side prominent so when i flip them inside out after they're sewn they will be white side prominent as well so remember the side you want to see up on your back panel the side that you want to see down on your side panels okay and put the the starting row down like here how i have a stick black row put that at the bottom as well and you want to do that with both side panels now we just sew them together and we're only going to sew them together at the top at first let me flip them around okay so you can use one of your tails that you have hanging now we just sew them together i'm going to use my yarn needle and you want to line them up with the stitches here i'm going to start at this end over here and i'm going to work my way and i'm going to sew it together as neat as possible with my yarn needle neatly as possible all right you want to try to keep the colors um you'll be able to see pretty well the matchups on these so i'm just going to go through one stitch here and then one stitch on the other side and like that and then i'm going to go through the next stitch on this side and the next stitch on this piece and go back now i'm not going over and over and over i'm doing the back and forth method you can sew together any way that you want whatever works for you but this is how i'm doing it i'm going through both loops on on, on each stitch and i'm just grabbing the same stitch on the opposite side and i'm gonna do this all the way across and then i'm gonna do it all the way across on my other side panel remember to make it the side panel the side that you don't want to see because when we flip this oh once we sew it down the sides and we flip it the right side will be facing all right that's what you want to do um so i'm going to sew this all the way up just like this remember you can sew it any way you want it's just your preference on on sewing there's no right or wrong here all the way till i get to the end and then what i'll do is grab the other side and i'll sew it as well and there'll be a little space here left over um in between the panels so i'm going to do this and then i'll do my other side panel and then i'll show you what we're going to sew on next all right next we'll hook up the sleeves and sew them on before we sew up the sides of the cardigan okay so let's check out that seam real quick maybe when i flip it this is what's going to show nice looks good don't it looks good so i'm glad i put that extra roll right there otherwise you you would have a thicker strip of black or whatever colors you guys are choosing you would have a, if you didn't put that extra row on the side panel you would have a solid strip of two rows of the same color and by adding that extra row it kind of just broke it up a bit it made it look not so noticeable that's awesome all right this side panel and then you bring your other side panel and remember whichever side that you are that you want to face right side up or you want to show in the front you put it down so you put your wrong side down so this is my black side prominent i don't want that to show uh, that's going to be on the inside so i'm facing it up and then i will sew it right here the same way as i'm sewing this one all right so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll go ahead and <clears throat> hook them sleeves up okay so i had to bring my work out here because i don't have a lot of room on my desk so you can see that i have my back panel and my two side panels sewn together now they are wrong side facing me right now you can see the seam right here now when if i was to flip this you can see that <clears throat> adding that extra row that i did of color on the um side panel um made it look where the seam was pretty much seamless because now there is no break in color 
If I would have not added added that extra row, we had two we would have had two rows of the same color together. And not like that's a bad thing. It just would have been a little bit more noticeable. I'm a big stickler for colors lining up. So if I can do something to keep them to keep, make them line up better, I will. Now that will make this uh, panel um, a little bit longer. Your side panel is a little bit longer than your back panel, but that's okay. We'll take care of that. So go ahead and put it back side facing you again. All right. Remember, whatever side that like this is the part I don't want to see when I flip it. I want the more white side prominent to be seen. So I'll flip it to where it's like that. So you can see my seams here. They're all going to be hidden. And now we're going to add the sleeves. Now the sleeves uh, for the hound's tooth have, have, they're done, have to be done this way. Otherwise, the hound's tooth pattern will be uh, upside down and um, it, it just won't work out, all right? To get it to the patterns to line up, the sleeves have to be done this way. So we made our sleeves uh, according to your uh, dimensions there. According to your stitch count there in the description box, all right? So mine was 50 stitches for, for uh, I have 50 stitches for my sleeve right now. That's, that's what mine required. So you can see that this is where we started and there's that thick piece of color. Now that's what's gonna go at the bottom because that's what's gonna go around the wrist. And I know it looks a little bit big, don't worry, we'll decrease it a little bit later. But for now, what we wanna do is uh, put the wrong side of the sleeve facing down so now everything is facing wrong side everything all right everything now we have to find the center of the sleeve so i know my piece my sleeve has 50 stitches so you know there's no exact center but i'm just going to go with 25. it doesn't have to be exact you know um uh, depending on what size you're using you know if you're using a bigger size like you just find the center point um, if it's off by one or two stitches, it's okay. So I'm going to count over 25 stitches here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirty-four, eighty-six, sixty-seven, eighty-eight, ninety-nine, ten, eleven, 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 twelve, thirty-four, eighty-six, sixty-seven, eighty-eight, ninety-n
to go through each stitch of the top of your sleeve piece and just kind of do your best to this part is just kind of a doing your best thing you know to evenly space out your little where you sew to get it sewn on and this is the part where even me who is a stickler on collar control is not going to be able to control the collar that well it would probably be uh if i flip it um mostly black there at, at the line of the sleeve by your shoulder but that's okay there's not much you can do about that so what, you can see what i'm doing is just kind of grabbing a piece on the back pulling it through and then going back the opposite direction grabbing a piece on the back and then going through the next stitch up here and i'm gonna do that all the way across remember both sleeves just do your best neatly as possible that's all you can do is your best just like that all right so sleeves are sewn on now it's time to sew up the sides of our cardigan still wrong side is going to be facing us let's go ahead and do deal with this side first doesn't matter um let's see here our, our sleeves are still flat so you know you know they're not sewn together yet okay let's lay it out here throw that stuff over there okay we're not counting that here's the front panel and here's the back panel we want to align those up at the bottom you can see the thick black the thick uh starting thick piece of color is at the bottom we want to make sure that stays at the bottom all right and we want to line them up line it up there okay if you want to tie it together there you can to hold it so you know hey you know what i'm gonna do that so i know hey those have to be there all right I can't do anything. I can't let these two move. These two, this bottom panel and the side panel at the bottom, they have to stay in this spot. They cannot move. So I'm just going to go through both of them, put a little stitch marker here. There we go. There. Now they're not going to move. Okay, we got it. And here is our sleeve up here. See that? So the sleeve's gonna fold in half. And later we will seam it up. Okay. Wrong side is still facing us. But first, so we got the sleeve folded in half, but it is not sewn yet. But make sure it's folded in half evenly. So they line up. See? That's where we have to start sewing down the side. And we're gonna sew the side as neatly as possible. Now, if you want to take a piece of yarn and put it here in the sleeve area, you can do that too. I'm actually going to do that at the corner of the sleeves on both sides. I'm going to be like, hey, this is where I have to start. This is the start of my sleeves. Um, and that's, you know, I can't even get it through there. It's too tight. All right, forget that. Scratch that. So, now remember... We don't want, this part's very important, and the same as the sleeves. We don't want the black and white rows to go, you know, go right and go all wonky on us. We have to keep them as neat as possible. We don't want to flip it and then, like, the seam look like, like this, you know, the, the black is lined up with the white. We want to make sure that when we flip it, the black is lined up with the black and the white is lined up with the white. Now, this part is most important part because you've got to keep this these these completely completely straight i mean it's as straight straight as, as you can get it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start down here that way i know these stay in place it doesn't matter what color of yarn that you use because we're working on the outs or the uh, wrong side of our pattern, so it's going to stay on the inside. I'm just going to use white. I'm going to use a yarn needle. Okay. 
All right, let's see here. What I'm going to do is, let me think for a second. Give me a minute, member. I roll with these as I go. Um, I think what I'm going to do is start. Yeah, yeah, all right. Remember, this is our side panel. Neatly as possible neatly as possible and you have to make sure that your white stays up with lined up with your white on the other side and that your black stays lined up with your black it's very important otherwise when you flip that and you look at that seam and if they're off you're not gonna like it well I won't like it I'll redo the whole thing I can't have lines not matching up so I'm gonna go ahead and start here now I'm gonna be putting fur around mine so putting a little knot here is not going to do anything at the bottom i'm putting for at the bottom okay so it's very important that you keep these rows lined up here let me move my camera so i can get a little closer so i'm at the bottom of my work and i'm going to be doing the back and forth method i'm going to grab a piece from the top on this side and a piece from the top on this side i'm going to pull it through once you get the going, it won't be all hard, so hard. It's all wrapped around my camera. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. And then I see this white row here and this white row here. So I'm going to go through this white row. And then bottom of this white row. Pull it through. And then I'm going to go through this white row again, because you see on this side is a double crochet on this side. The white's double crochet on this side, but it's single crochet on this side. So I have to go through the white row on that one. Keep those lined up. You got to keep them lined up. Now we're going to be hitting the black row. Now the black row is double crochet on this side and a single crochet on this side. It could be opposite for, for you, but go into the black row here. And then the top of the black row here. So right here, you see, I just went into the top of that black row, pull through. And then I need to go into down here on the black row and then into that black row again on the other side. Got to keep them lined up. Very important. So this part, you just take your time and we do this all the way up, keeping our white and black rows lined up as much as we can now no one says it's going to be perfect it's not going to be but you do the best you can to keep them lined up and then just take your time you don't have to hurry on this part no race we just take our time Try to keep, make sure you keep those nice and lined up there. Now what I like to do, I have to really do a couple rows here. Let's go back and look and make sure that everything's staying lined up. Let me do one more white to make sure I'm keeping everything the way I want it to be. And if it's not, I'll take it out and do it again. This is what we're going to do the whole way. The whole way up. 
So we get two bar, uh, sleeve. Let me flip it and see what it looks like. Nice. Nice and lined up. See that? Don't worry, I'll pull those tight and you won't be able to see those. You won't be able to see those. And that's going to go away, actually. I can take that away right now. It's not going to be there. I was just to hold them together at the bottom. Plus the bottom is going to have fur on it. Fur is very forgiving. But yes, so my rows are staying, pre are staying pretty lined up. My seam is looking... It's got to pull a little tighter. Pretty good. For a seam, you know. It can't be perfect, but I'm going to take care of that. I don't like that. But other than that, yeah, they're staying pretty lined up. So I'll flip it back over. And I'm going to continue all the way up the sides until I get up here to the armpit of my sleeve. All right, so I've made it all the way up the side here. I haven't looked at it. I'm only hoping for the best. And now I'm on my sleeve. What you can do is... If you have still have yarn on your needle, which I do, you can just continue going down the sleeve in the same manner. So we're just gonna sew it up wrong side out and then later we'll flip it. So I went up from the bottom all the way up, doing my best to line up them lines. I can only hope for the best. And now I'm at the corner here of or my sleeves meet and since I still have yarn on my hook I'm just going to continue or on my needle I'm just going to continue going down the sleeve sewing it up the same way and we do both sides the same you sew up the side and then you sew up the sleeve the exact same way all right and then uh, once we're finished with that we will flip it inside out and or right side out see what she looks like all right so remember once you get done going up one side you can tie off if you want and then you just go down the sleeve the same way or if you still have yarn on your hook like i do or on my needle i'm just going to continue going on down the sleeve so as you can see i am in the arm pit area and i want to make sure still that my rows line up black and white the best way that i can or whatever colors that you're using you want to try to make sure that your rows line up even in the sleeve area here. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm not sure. Good thing this is going to be in the armpit, right? No, no. No, even no. If we make a mistake here. Hopefully not. If they do, then they're way too close. To your armpit. And that's weird. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joking. Alright, I'm going to continue down lining up my rows as best as I can until I get to the end of my sleeve. Both sides are done the same way. All right, so am I sewn up uh, uh, both sides and down both sleeves? Now I have to flip it inside out and only, only hope that my seams look halfway decent. So you got to flip your sleeves inside out as well and make sure that they stay pretty well lined up. Oh, I'm happy with that side. Now we hope for the best on the other. Maybe we're taking the whole thing, flipping the sleeves as well, inside out. Because everything is backwards, because we want this, what we've sewn to be on the inside. <sighs> nice. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's pretty, pretty well lined up. Awesome. Everything is awesome. All right, and the sleeve, the seam of your sleeve should be on the bottom of your arm, and that is what it is. Now, what are we gonna do? Let's see. Now, what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna put fur on mine. So, what you do next? The sky's the limit for you. Now, if you do not want to put fur, by all means, do not. Fur is not everybody's forte, but it is bag of days. So. Oh, we got to add pockets, sorry. Now, before we add the pockets, though, I'm going to show you some, some things that you can do instead of fur. Now, instead of fur, you can always kind of, what I would do if I was not going to put fur on this, I, myself, would probably evenly space out single crochet up the sides here. And then all the way around the neck 
here and then all the way back down here to the side and then i would probably myself put some type of ribbing on it like or you could do rows of double crochet if you want um you could do it in a solid color like black or whatever colors you're using and you could just you know accent it with a with the solid color um and then you could do the same around the bottom you know maybe if you wanted to maybe add a little bit of ribbing or some rows of single crochet rows of double crochet that's just some things that you can do um, other than fur it's really completely up to you because it's your cardigan but definitely definitely if you are not going to add fur i would at the very least i would definitely clean up these side rows uh, by evenly spacing up uh, out single crochet all the way up and then um, just I'll follow it along the neck here and then back down and maybe like i said if you're not going to do anything else maybe a couple rows of two or three rows of single crochet um just to clean up this these tight edges and that'll make it look a lot more cleaner and maybe one on the bottom uh to clean that up as well that's you know at the bare minimum if you didn't want to do anything else it would still look good it would still look nice and clean if you did that but other than that ribbing is always an option okay so we got to do pockets and i forgot we are going to decrease these sleeves a bit not much they you know they're baggy sleeves they're supposed to be baggy but i think i will do just a bit of decreasing um okay so the sleeves are supposed to be baggy but i am going to do one row of decreases on them so um you can start anywhere you want in any one of these stitches here pull your yarn through chain one and what i'm going to do is um i'm going to decrease over single crochet decrease over every two every stitches every two stitches so i'm going to go back into the same stitch i'm going to drop a loop and I'm going to go in the next stitch. I'm going to drop a loop and yarn over and go through those three loops. And that's what I'm going to do all the way around. So I'm going to go into the next stitch here. That's not worked. Drop a loop. And then the next one that's not worked. Drop a loop. Yarn over and go through all three. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Then I'm going to go into the next one that's not worked. Drop a loop. And then the next one that's not worked. Drop a loop yarn over and go through all three again the next one that's not worked drop a loop the next one that's not worked drop a loop yarn over and go through all three i'm going to do this all the way around i know the black's hard to see i apologize but i don't can't make the same sleeve in a bunch of different colors so remember we're just single crochet decreasing and every single crochet decrease is worked over two stitches. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just decreasing um, every two stitches, single crochet. And then I'll do the same thing to the other sleeve. And I'll be, at, like I said, add fur. Um, fur to mine. But I'll tell you what, if I was doing this and I wasn't adding fur, I would do one more round. After this, I would do one more round of just regular, sing one single crochet in every stitch, just to clean up that, uh, this decrease row that we're doing. But since I'm doing fur, you're not even going to be able to see it, so it doesn't matter. So, as you can see, it's just decreasing. All the stitches, just decreasing. Single crochet until you make it back to your starting point. And I'm only doing one row with this. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a cuff, I guess. Although it's still pretty baggy because it's supposed to be. But so I'm gonna do this until I get back to my starting point. Alright, so I've made it back to my starting point, and I'm just gonna end by slip stitching into my first single crochet decrease. Now remember, if you're not gonna be adding fur or anything. I would probably just go around one more time with just one single crochet in every stitch just to clean up that row but you don't you know you don't have to but nope i guess it would help if i clipped it right <laughs> i'm going to do the same thing to my other sleeve before i add fur but 
yeah i'll go ahead and do the same thing to my other sleeve remember the sleeves are supposed to be baggy they're supposed to be all right so now for the pockets that will be up to you you can sew them wherever you want <clears throat> and we'll sew them the same way just uh neatly down the sides here and then this way back up and leave the top open for your hand i don't know if i want pockets on mine or not now that i'm looking at it yeah yeah i guess i will for decor so make sure you put it get your seam up here on the side so you know exactly where you want to put your pocket if you want to whip out your tape measure it's going to be different for everybody depending on how far your hands go down you know um just make sure that your uh hound's tooth is going in the same pattern same direction as you can see so this thicker part on the bottom will be on the bottom as well and just take some yarn and neatly sew it up down this side down the bottom and back up this side and leave your top open and just make sure you leave the same space or you do it have me rows up you do it from the bottom you do it exactly the same on the other side and um you know what i mean that that's what i kind of do is count my rows so and then yeah same same spacing same space you, you whip out your tape measure like i said if you want to make sure it's precise and measure make sure you get it <clears throat> in the exact spot on both sides and like i said take a piece of yarn and kind of neatly sew it only th only sew it through this one piece though don't go to the back and and that'll be in on the pockets and then uh i can show you how to add a fur if that's if you'd like okay i changed my mind i don't really want pockets on mine but i did show you know show you how to make them and how to sew them on so you can do that if you want all right now uh remember i did go over the things that you could do if you if you didn't want to add fur it's completely up to you but if you do want to add fur let's roll with it won't you so um i jumped my hook up to a nine or a ten millimeter what is this it's an n sometimes ends are nine and sometimes are ten uh, i'm gonna start down here at the corner and the good thing about fur is it's super forgiving so if you make a mistake ain't no one gonna know so I'm just going to kind of start down here in the corner and the closest to the corner as I can get. I'm going to pull that fur through and I'm going to be doing, I'm going to chain one here. I'm going to do double, double crochets. Now, as you can see, it's going to be hard to see where you need to put them, but that's okay because like I said with fur, it's so forgiving that you don't really need to see. You just kind of do your double crochets, you know? Like that. Spur's a bit thicker than the fur I usually work with. And then you just go up kind of evenly spacing out double crochets. Kind of just kind of going in between stitches. Yeah, this is a lot thicker of a fur than... I usually use I might only need one row of this so yeah I'm just kind of guessing all right and like I said if you miss um, like where you're going in you're just kind of trying to evenly space them out oh, I am anyways if you miss no one's gonna know because fur hides mistakes it's one of its many lovely features i think so i'm just gonna do this all the way around top or up the side and then around the neck and then back down the other side and i'll look at it when i get back around to see if i think it needs another row it's pretty thick fur like i said it's a lot thicker than what I usually use, but still very pretty. Oh, beautiful. I'm gonna go around the bottom too, but 
So I'm just going to continue just kind of evenly spacing out a double crochet of fur all the way up the side here. And then I'll just continue around the neck here. And then I'll continue all the way back down this other side. And that's where I'll meet back up with you. All right, so I've made it all the way around my piece. And I think my fur is thick enough. Um, it's probably an inch and a half to two inches thick. So I'm not going to go around again. But I am going to continue around the bottom here. Oh, my stitches came out. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So just go ahead and work um, your double crochets here until you get to the bottom. So we're coming up on the bottom here and I want to continue the fur around the bottom. So I'm just going to go kind of in one of the bottom stitches there at the corner. I'm actually going to put one, I'm going to go back in the same stitch and do another one, double crochet, two, um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put three in that corner stitch there. That way the corner kind of lays flat like that well as flat as possible now I'm going to continue along the bottom and again this is just it's it's you just go evenly spacing out some some double crochets um so as you can see the bottom here is um so let's look here what I got so I did three in a corner there and I'm going to work across the bottom. I'm going to go like into, I don't know, I guess maybe I'm on in this stitch way up here or this, or this stitch, it doesn't matter, but kind of keep track. Like if you go into a stitch to kind of keep it a little even, just kind of keep track. I'm then I'll probably skip a couple stitches in between since it's such a big yarn. Yeah. Come over here, skip that one, and skip that one, that one, and come over here to the next one. Uh, Cause it takes a bunch of space. So yeah, I think I'll skip two in between on the bottom and then go into the next one. Now you don't have to do that. You can do yours however you want. It's just, like I said, it's just for, you ain't gonna be able to tell, you ain't even gonna be able to tell how many that you skip skipped anyways um so i really don't even know why i'm doing it i guess just to give myself a little bit of reasoning up to what i'm doing all right and i'm gonna work all the way across the bottom until we get back to where we started and we started with one double crochet into that first stitch so we'll have to put two more double crochets in it to end it but yeah. All right. Let me continue this up. I like it. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I made it back to the, my starting point. So here's where I started. I'm just going to go ahead and put two more double crochets into that same stitch that I started in. I just think it's so pretty. And then I'm going to end by, let's see, I'm going to come over here to my very first stitch. Right here it is, see? Here's the very first stitch. I'm going to go in between it and just slip stitch. That way you don't have to try to find the top of the stitch. It's fur. No one's going to know. No one can be able to see what you're doing. It's, it's, that's the beauty of it. All right, so I'm going to slip stitch that off. And then to hide the tails of the fur, again, super easy to do. You just take your hook and you weave it in and out. Because, as I mentioned, no one can see it anyways. So I just go back and forth with it like this until I feel like it's hidden. You want to hide all your all your tails that you've uh, accumulated with your fur or that you've made with your fur. Then once that's done, I'm going to go around the sleeves, the cuffs of the sleeves. 
in the same way that I just did this. Only to be just, you know, not as big, not as much fur around the sleeves, but yeah, you just hide your tails kind of in and out your stitches with your hook. Back through. You can hide it till they're completely invisible. And then you can clip off that in if you want. Oh man, that's some pretty stuff. Now with fur, one thing you can't do is you can kind of go around the bottom. If you have a, you can use a, like a really light bristly brush if you want. But otherwise, I kind of just use my fingers and go along the edges like this. And floop it out a little bit. Well, you can't tell. You won't be able to tell where you put the stitches. You can't tell really anyways, but this just helps a bit. This gets all the, it all equaled out like this. Go around the whole piece doing this, you know, around the bottom there. Pulling out all the extra fuzz that didn't come all the way through. And flooping it. Man, this is pretty. All right, when that, once that's done, then, I mean, I'll do it more later, but uh, I'll floof it up some more. I'll give it a good floofing in a bit, but now you just want to do, if you're doing it, you can do the sleeves. I'm going to do my sleeves, same way. Just going to start in a stitch, any stitch. And go around and kind of double crochet, chain one, go back in that same stitch and double crochet. Maybe. It's really not hard. I'm just making it look harder than what it is. <laughs> okay. And then probably skip a couple stitches or something. Maybe. But just kind of evenly space out some stitches. Double crochets all the way around the cuff of your sleeve. That is, if you were doing fur. I understand. Like I said, fur is not for everybody. But every day does like it i'm gonna go ahead and do both of mine the same my cuffs the same you know and i'll end it with the slip stitch the same way i did up there in between my first double crochets oh, it's gonna be so pretty